corsage from start to finish, making the bow, adding the flowers, and embellishing it. I'm going to start with the bow. I'm going to use a double face satin number three. This is probably the most challenging part of the project that, and once you conquer this, you can pretty much use this technique and make anything. So, double face satin number three. Um, you can use any size. This is the most typical size that you would use for a corsage. Um, you can use different uh, textures. The um, sheer works really well. Number nine is okay as well, and that just is referring to the width. When I say number three, it just refers to the width. So I'm going to start out with a loop, and um, your first loop is going to dictate how you how big your corsage bow is, or your bow in general is. So you start out with a loop, you're gonna fold over and make the same size loop. Pinch it in the middle, and that's gonna be the starting point of your bow. And then you're just going to hold that tight. As long as you're holding that center tight, you're gonna have the bow stay in place. So you're gonna pull this back, twist, make another loop slightly larger than your last loop same thing full twist slightly larger and you're just going to keep going till you get the right size bow the key to this is twisting in the middle if you don't twist you're going to get a very slippery surface and the bow is just going to want to fall apart on you keep twisting and making loops now see how I'm fanning out slightly, and this is going to give shape to my bow when I'm finished. Now, for corsage bows, you make them somewhat elongated since they're going either on the body or the wrist. So you don't want it to be too fat and round. You want it to be more long and lean. Keep twisting and making loops. Like I said, once you master this, you can pretty much make any size bow with any kind of ribbon for any occasion. I'm just going to be making kind of a standard corsage to show you the technique. You can adjust your loops as you go, or you can do it after you're finished with the bow. I usually make about 12 loops per side. And you gradually get the loops smaller, bigger, all the way out. You just cut at an angle that keeps your ribbon from fraying. Grab a wire, mend it in half. Keep your finger fingers tight on the ribbon. Pull your wire through, keeping your fingers in place. Put your forefinger against the back of the bow and twist. I recommend a small uh, gauge on this. Um, it's easier to work with. So then now you can fluff your bow out to the shape that you want and position your loops to where you want them. And this is a basic corsage bow that we make on a daily basis. Now I'm going to add in the wristlet. You can, this is our technique here at Fleur Du Jour. I'm going to trim this and bend it over. We glue the wristlets on. You've got the fingers here, just bend them up around your thumb like that. And you can use a hot glue gun. I have a glue pot. And I'm just going to add the glue on there. Just being careful to put, put plenty of it on there so that the bow does not want to move once it's in position. Take your longest loops on the back of the bow, slip it right into the center. And 
bend those fingers back down over the loop. And it'll take just a minute or two to dry. And you can reposition your loops if need be at that point. The double face satin ribbon is great for if you're using glue because the glue will come right off of that because it's such a slick surface if you happen to mess up and get some on the ribbon. So now our wristlet is on the corsage and we're ready to move forward with adding the flowers. You can add any kind of wristlet um, to a, cors a corsage bow like this, um, like something a little bit sparkly to add in some bling to the corsage, for, whether it be for prom or um, something uh, special event that you want to add a little pizzazz to. And these are just as easy to use, similar technique, um, and you just tie it on as well as glue it on. But this is just a basic wristlet. So we're going to add in some flowers. I'm going to use some uh, spray roses today. These are super hardy for corsages. They withstand being off the stem without water and um, they actually really like to be glued onto stuff because it actually seals it up and keeps it from dehydrating. So for the middle uh, flower, I'm gonna choose a blue that's larger because you want the weight of your flower, of your corsage in the middle of the bow. And this one I'm gonna just take, trim it off. I'm gonna glue it. Lots and lots of glue on there. Just stick it right in the center. Don't worry if the glue shows a little bit. We're going to cover that up later. This one's a really blown open rose, which I really like to use so that um, it gives a lot of dimension to the corsage. So I'm going to choose two smaller blooms for the ends. I'm going to cut these slightly longer than I did the middle one. And that's so I have more to glue to and so it gets more depth into the ribbon. It's a little bit longer. I'm going to pinch just a little bit more off. Same technique. Just pinch the head of the rose and dip it straight into the glue or use your glue gun to uh, put glue all over the back of that flower just like this. Lots of glue. Put it into the deep part of the ribbon. Turn it and do the same thing on the other side. Into the deep part of the ribbon. So now we've got our main flowers into the corsage. And if our loops aren't cooperating, just kind of manipulate them back to the position you want them in. Okay. So now we want to add some filler flower that's going to add color and even more dimension to the corsage. This today I'm using something called Misty Blue. This is comes in like a purple color, some pinks and stuff. It's going to go really nice with this pink, this real soft purple. And this would be perfect for a baby shower or a wedding shower. And you could add in baby items um, to uh, enhance the corsage or something that would signify kind of a wedding feel um, for the bride-to-be. Trim off little pieces. This is a real hardy flower as well that you could put into a corsage that's going to withstand not being in water. And you want to put those deep into the ribbon too for two reasons. It's going to keep it secure as well as um, hide any glue that might be lingering on the stem. So you're just going to tuck it into places you think need, need some uh, some coverage and you just keep doing that till you get to the point you feel comfortable that the corsage is embellished enough. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to take over with the filler flower where the filler flower takes over the main flower. So we're just going to keep gluing. This is Misty Blue also dries really well and it just um, keeps its color and it's one of those flowers that even after it's, it's not fresh anymore, it's, you can still use it for applications even um, like this, even after it's dried. 
The glue pot that I'm using is a forest grade glue pot. is very worth the investment if you if you do stuff like this often. Um, to purchase one, it makes uh, production of items, tedious items like this, much faster. If you don't do it very often, I suggest a simple glue gun that you might find at your craft store. Uh, on a high temperature melt would be the best choice. Okay, so we've embellished our corsage with our uh, filler flower. Now, if you wanted to enhance this even further, there's things that you can add to it. Feathers or, um, like I mentioned, baby items if you were going to be doing um, a baby shower. Um, anything that is small enough to fit in here that would look good um, on a person's wrist is always welcome to enhance a corsage and of course for prom all types of bling and glitz is always welcome thanks so much for watching come and see us at 447 3rd street with florida jour baton rouge is only downtown florist